Let's start with the network then. A few years back, networks were physical only, having a single person managing them, whether SAN or LAN. However, this model has evolved and now we have also virtual networks, potentially from multiple hypervisors, container networks, and even cloud networks from different providers, which makes providing consistent and fast network configurations almost impossible. This may even get worse once we add to operations, security, and troubleshooting. This is where we evolved the model as well, changing from a distributed model where we would configure the data center physical network through the CLI on a per port, per switch, and even per location basis to a centralized and automated model providing one management point, automation, and consistent configuration for physical, virtual, container, and cloud networking in any location using Cisco ACI. Let's put a modular Nexus 7000 switch as an example for the legacy model and realize what has changed now with ACI. Before, we would purchase scale-up architectures with single or dual supervisors as the management point of that device. We would normally buy two for high availability, and then we would buy one or multiple line cars that had different speeds and media types based on the poor density our environment would need. Finally, and particularly for the Nexus 7000, we would buy fabric modules that would serve as the backplane or crossbar for my switch in order to communicate line cards and supervisors amongst them. Once we would run out of ports, we would buy another switch with a totally independent management plane. This approach would lead to two potential issues. One, I would normally buy a larger box than what I would need to initially, since this was a scale-up model. And two, the more switches I had, the worse I would get in terms of operations, since not only would I need to manage multiple switches independently through the CLI, but they would very likely have inconsistent configurations. Firmware upgrades would also be a challenge since they would be required on a per box basis and changes would take time to perform. Now with ACI, we basically disaggregated that model and changed to a scale out architecture, which can run on premises, virtually, or even on the cloud. Let's start by covering the on-premises architecture. First, we have a single management point for multiple switches, virtual, and container networks called the APIC. APICs are either physical servers or a mixture of physical servers and VMs that serve as the management plane and provide you with a single and central GUI, CLI, and RESTful API. You may have one APIC, just like one supervisor, but nobody wants to be nervous in production environments, right? Therefore, a cluster with a minimum of three APICs is recommended. Then, instead of line cards and a chassis, we will follow a scale-out model by using fixed Nexus 9000 top-of-rack switches called LEAFs. We connect servers, switches, routers, firewalls, and any other endpoint to this layer. Just choose the right LEAF model based on the speed and media type, and APIC will automatically discover and configure it running VXLAN as data plane. There are multiple LEAF models that support speeds from 1 MEX, 1 GIG, and 10 GIGs, all the way to 25, 40, 50, 100, and even 400 GIGs. And not only that, but even fiber channel running on MPP mode is supported, which means less ports and management points for both LAN and SAN in your data center. Then, we will need to communicate all LEAFs amongst them, and since there is no backplane or crossbar like before, and we do not want to cable all leaves together, ACI requires a spine layer, which aggregates connectivity from all the leaves you may have. With this in mind, and even if you started with one APIC, one leaf, and one spine in a non-redundant environment, ACI dramatically reduces the time it would take you to manually provision a VXLAN network, automatically discovering every switch you connect, and configuring a routed underlay, the VXLAN overlay, and even MPVGP with zero configuration on your end. This is great, especially because you're extending layer two from any leaf to any leaf and using every link from the leaf to the spine layer, leveraging equal cost multipathing. Then you can scale your network as your business grows very simply and automatically. If you need more ports, you add more leaves, more throughput between them, you add more spines and more redundancy at the management level more Apex. It is that simple. 
Remember that virtual and container networking from multiple vendors is also integrated as part of the solution at no additional cost, providing faster and consistent configurations, management, and simpler troubleshooting from a single point. Let's now take a look at how ACI provides agility at the network level by showing you how auto discovery, MPBGP, and VXLAN configuration works. The very first thing you do when you install a brand new ACI fabric is providing an IP address to your APIC through a wizard, and immediately after, you run the initial setup on the GUI. APIC will automatically discover the leaf and spine switches, and all you have to do is click on register in order to accept them to become part of the fabric. By only adding a node ID and a name to each new switch APIC discovers, ISIS, VXLAN, Multicast, and many others will be automatically configured. Then, with another couple of clicks, I can also enable MPBGP running on the spine layer in order to automatically redistribute networks from external routers into the ACI fabric. And we also simplify provisioning DNS, NTP, and even best practices since you only have to do it once through the wizard and APIC will push that configuration to every new switch. That means no more per switch configurations since everything is done centrally on APIC. If you are more into the CLI, you can also configure everything centrally. As you can see, I can still SSH into my APIC and if I run a show version, it displays all the elements that have been added to the fabric, spines and leaves. Then, if I want to configure everything through the CLI, I can. The difference is that I don't need to be accessing and configuring every switch separately. Everything is aggregated, as you can see, and even tasks like firmware upgrades are now done centrally for the whole fabric. Still, if I need to run any troubleshooting or diagnostics commands locally on each switch, I can still do so by attaching to the leaf or spine I may want to check. Remember, all configuration is done consistently at the APIC level. Therefore, with this model, there are no configuration options at the switch level, as you can see. Not only do we have now a central management points for physical networks, which displays all port status and connections, but we can also integrate virtual and container-based networks as well, making consistent configurations and operations simpler. It only takes a single console, and the nice part is that you don't need to go into the VM console or the container environment to troubleshoot and fix potential networking issues. Everything is consistently done. Then we can take network management consolidation and automation to the next level by integrating multiple pods or even data centers that may be separated by a layer 3 domain in the middle. This means that as long as there is an intermediate routed network between two buildings or locations, each of them having ACI spines, and leaves, ACI can also automate the data center interconnect between them using VXLAN as well. But this time, connecting such intermediate routed network, also known as interpod network, to the spine layer, since we are extending the simulated backplane to a remote location. That translates to savings by potentially avoiding expensive dark fiber or LAN to LAN connections, extending layer 2 automatically and enabling VM mobility anywhere which is very well suited for active active data center deployments. ACI can aggregate up to 12 pods through a single AP cluster, making it really scalable. In order to support multi-pod, the intermediate routed network that separates each pod should have no more than 50 milliseconds in round trip time, support jumbo frames due to VXLAN encapsulation and multicast. If there is a small location or brownfield in your network, and you need to extend layer 2 while maintaining centralized management, Remote Leaf is also a great ACI implementation option. Instead of installing a full-blown ACI pod with spines, leaves, and apex, you can just deploy a couple of Nexus 9000 leaves on that remote location, co-location, or brownfield, and ACI will automatically discover and provision it. All it needs is a routed connection in the middle as well, with less than 300 milliseconds in round-trip time, as well as DHCP relay, and ACI can aggregate up to 64 remote leaf pairs. No multicast is needed in this case. Then, if for whatever reason you don't have Nexus 9000 hardware, you can also extend ACI to a remote location by using virtual ACI, enabling the spine and leaf functionality as virtual machines. 
All these four ACI flavors are still considered a single ACI site, since they would be managed by a single AP cluster. All changes and configurations would be centrally performed and simultaneously pushed to each location, providing consistency and centralized management. Now, if you're finding your ways to the cloud, or maybe you're already there, you will find that configuring and protecting the network on each cloud is not an easy task, since you have to configure and learn each cloud's way of doing networking. This can take a considerable amount of time, especially if running on different regions or cloud providers. Cloud ACI can help you onboard cloud networking with consistent policies and configurations while reducing the learning curve for each cloud. That means that if you learn how to configure the network once through ACI or Cloud ACI, you can leverage that knowledge in multiple clouds since Cloud ACI normalizes the network configuration. You don't need to buy or run Nexus 9000 on each cloud. All you have to do is subscribe to the Cloud APIC service on either Amazon or Azure Marketplace, and you will get a central networking console that can span across multiple cloud regions and which will allow you to still use each cloud native services. As I said before, Cloud ACI does not need to run on top of any special hypervisor or hardware. It just uses whatever the cloud uses. So it basically just translates the network configurations you do on Cloud APIC to the cloud's native constructs, accelerating your journey to the cloud consistently. Then, if you have multiple cloud vendors running Cloud APICs, in this case, Amazon and Azure, you can further aggregate them through a software service that may also be running in the cloud or even on-prem called Multi-Site Orchestrator or MSO. MSO not only centralizes management for multiple ACI sites, including cloud ones and on-premises ones, but also provides an easy way to interconnect multiple data centers and clouds automatically. By automating the configuration of the embedded CSR 1000 Bs on each cloud APIC, MSO provides a quick and secure way to interconnect multiple clouds automatically. MSO can also interconnect clouds to on-premises ACI, enabling hybrid cloud connectivity. It is also a great tool to aggregate multiple on-premises ACI sites as well, extending layer two between them and creating a great use case for long distance VM mobility across larger geographical distances, since it only needs less than one seconds of round trip time between the MSO and each on-premises APIC. It also allows asynchronous configuration deployments per site if you need to, and unlike multipod, it does not require multicast running between sites. With all these options, we believe you now can run ACI anywhere, consolidating management and provisioning for all network types, including layer four, layer seven services like firewalls and server load balancers, while providing automated data center and cloud interconnect plus consistent configurations and troubleshooting. We just released version five, which includes some great new features like AWS transit gateways and Amazon Kubernetes support, segment routing and MPLS handoff for service providers, and many more. I encourage you to take a look at it. In a nutshell, infrastructure agility for the network is now defined by software consistently, runs reliably on hardware, and may be enabled anywhere. MSO centralizes all your network operations and configurations, which will extend to NXOS fabrics with DCNM in the near future. All you need to do is choose the right hardware if you're running on-premises and let auto discovery, auto configuration, and even other Cisco automation integrations reduce the amount of work you need to do.